Hey Thorns fans, welcome to the Thorns Show. I'm Ann Schatz, delighted to have you on board and delighted to welcome our very special guest, you're looking at him, Thorns head coach Mark Parsons. Any time with you, any time with you is a treat. Thanks for being here and let's get going. All right. Thanks. How did I how did I get this lucky or how did I get this privilege of being the guinea pig? Um, I'm desperate for some air contact with you and it was going to be a drive down to the coast to see you or even better be on the first Thorn show. So I'm glad we've managed to make this work. Can't wait to catch up. This is great. Uh, thanks, pal. I appreciate that. Um, you know, we're going to chunk this show into four segments, Mark. And, and the first part of it is, is going to be a look back at the matches that you guys have already banked in this young season. Um, obviously, obviously, you and the Thorns coming off that big victory against Racing Louisville. That was at Providence Park. Brutal stretch of games that you guys have endured. And you get through Racing Louisville, uh, you know, without Sinky, without Sophia Smith, and yet the victory. 3-2-0, and oh, solidly in second place in the standings. How are you feeling about that scenario as we speak? Uh, well, the scenario of, of the, uh, the, the results, as you put it, the outcome of our work so far, we had the worst four days imaginable with the Sunday and Wednesday results of O.L. Rain and Orlando. You know, like, what is going on? Right. This wasn't part of the plan. And, and the outcome is fine and the standings are fine and all those things. Um, performance wise is obviously the area of focus and every training session, every day, every meeting. And then on game day, we, we're just obsessed with seeing growth, um, in ourselves, in our performance, but also our ability to solve problems, our ability to, to constantly apply our principles. Um, and this game specifically against Louisville was the happiest. I think all mm. of us felt with uh, our principles with and without the ball, our identity, our personality was on full show and full effect. And of course, Chicago, the result you can say is better, but we weren't, we against Louisville, that was the clearest we have been in all the moments of the game, the way we see the game. We were Portland Thorns and the players knew it and felt it. The staff knew it and felt it. I don't know if I've ever said um, incredible uh, doing great, well done. I love it. Keep do, keep going more than in, in, in a game than than this game in six years. Ooh. I thought the players were outstanding, um, and uh, it was it was a great it was a great way to go into this FIFA date. You know, you've been able to force to however you want to look at at it, tinker with some of your lineups. You, you, you factor in travel, recovery, international duties, some knocks factoring in. Getting a look at a variety of starters, substitution patterns. How does this speak to the depth of your club in this unique year, an Olympic year? Yeah, it shows great, great depth in in talent. I think coaches will always uh, uh, pretend um, that they have all the answers and magic sessions, or um, and sometimes players will do the same. Talent number one is a major. Uh, factor in successful teams. Now, talent alone will will win you a couple of games, but won't win you championships. But talent is important. So we got a load of depth in talent. Mm -hmm. um, so we're not. It's not. It's not um, rotation for rotation's sake, or just because of a brutal schedule. Because we could absolutely um, push and burn through some players, and and really probably affect them medium long term in a negative way. We we could do that. Uh, it's this is because. We're going to need everyone and everyone is working. Everyone is earning the opportunity. If people aren't earning and people aren't performing, then you can't rotate. You can have talent, but maybe talent isn't performing. You cannot have talent and that puts you in a tougher spot. So we've got talent. We have an identity and style of play. We have identity and culture. And we know, every single one of us know that at some point, everyone is going to have to, to step in and do their part. Everyone's going to have to step off and step out. Mm. And, their part. and and on the field and off the field, when, when it's your turn to play that role, you've got to be all in in our, in our club, in our family, in our environment. And the team are doing that superbly. Um, Megan Nally recently against Louisville um, was stayed behind, unfortunately, on that long road trip. She was an absolute leader with the small group mm. here in Providence Park while we we're on the road, getting better, feel, feeling better about herself, taking care of her teammates. And the, the, the couple of days of training that we had before Louisville 
um, she was outstanding in showing that. And we wanted to reward that behavior and that attitude towards growth and, and improving. And, and that's why we saw her. So it, it's it's all about what, what are the group doing? What are the players doing? And when they're doing what they're currently doing, we have great options. We have depth. We have flexibility. Of course, you touched on the schedule. Um, we, we got through that period pretty unscathed. As I say that, mm -hmm. it was incredibly hard for the players and physically and mentally, um, not because of just the standard or expectation of the trip, but the standards they hold themselves to. They emptied the tank in every capacity. Mm -hmm. and that, that between, the OL, uh, between Orlando and Gotham, two losses, and we're on the road, they had some fantastic conversations and all around what, you know, we, we, we got a whole season worth of growing to do. But what is the one, two areas that we can control right now that helps us another 5% against Gotham? Because we only felt we were missing one, 2% in those, in those uh, previous games that we had not got the result we wanted. We were so happy with, with a lot that we were missing. So I love this group. I love how they're choosing to work. I love how they're choosing to commit to each other. That has provided the options for us coaching staff. If that's not there, then we don't have the options we currently have. That's huge. Um, and I love, like you said, the momentum with that depth and this last victory sets you up nicely for this break. Um, as I mentioned, this is a show of four segments. So we're going to put that first segment in the bank and we're going to queue up the next segment because this one's going to be loads of fun. And I'm telling you what, pal, you better be ready because it's all about five questions. Oh, it's all about questions that you have no idea what's coming. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about it. Could All right, so we love your tactical and technical brilliance, complemented in my, in my estimation by the intangibles of heart, soul, culture. You love to get to know every person that is associated with the Portland Thorns. So now I'm going to put you on the hot seat. Know your coach, baby. Just how well, Mark Parsons, do you know your assistant coach, the one and only Ice Bear, Nadine Angerer? <laughs> this is going to be dangerous. Hey Mark, I wish you good luck, and, but I know you're going to fail and I exactly know which answer it will be. Well, so the gauntlet has been thrown down. Now, five <laughs> questions carefully procured. You're on the hot seat. Let's go. What year, Mark Parsons, did Nadine come to Portland? Nadine, come into Portland. What do you got? 2014. Nadine? 2014. <laughs> there, if we had a ding, 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 I'd give it to you. That's one in the plus column. All right, well done. It's going to get tougher. Nadine played for four different countries during the course of her brilliant career. Name those four countries. Take your time. Yep, U.S., Australia, Germany, Oh, I'm going to go Sweden, and I'm not going to tell you why. Nadine, is he right? Sweden, Australia, Germany, US. What on earth? Another ding, ding, ding. All right, you're on a roll. All right, here we go. Now, Nadine played for all those countries and played for a bunch of different clubs across those countries. For which club did she play the most seasons? Um, uh, yes, yeah, between two, Frankfurt, Potsdam. I'm going to go, well, Potsdam had a coach. Stop. Stop. Nadine? Potsdam. Tobina Potsdam. Setting you up. I don't want to hear about you going back and forth. That's another winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right. All right. Here's one that's kind of goofy. And, I, and it's because of Nadine that this is goofy. What year did Angerer win FIFA Player of the Year? 2013. Okay. Nadine, mess this thing up for us. 2014. Yeah, it's, you're right. So here's where she screws up. She wins it in 2013. The ceremony happened in 2014. You're 4-0. I'm losing a bet at every turn. Okay, here's your softball, pal. What was the last team Nadine played for? Portland Thorns. She almost played recently as well. Yep. Nadine, you might as well bring us home. Portland Thorns. Ooh, five and oh. Five and oh. No, no, come on, Anne. That was that was easy. And you also 
yeah, you, you, you didn't open any doors. We, we, there is, there's some, there's some skeletons in Nadine's closet and you, you could, you could have walked me into some of those, but you kept it simple. So it's fine. Well, I just can't believe you got all those countries I, and, and, and Potsdam. So how I got to Potsdam was it, is the only coach that I think could put up with Nadine for a long period and great stories about him. So that's how I was going to land there. Well, brilliant. Okay. So, uh, I was just so ready to say, Oh, I'm so sorry. We'll do it again sometime. Instead it's tip of the cap. So now we head to our next segment and we're on a serious blitzkrieg, blitzkrieg roll. All right. This is a chance for Thorns fans to get, you know, get to know you a little bit and we're going to call it extra time, uh, off the pitch, uh, getting to know you just a little bit deeper. Um, y- you've been involved in women's soccer, Mark, for years and years and years, decades, starting in England and continuing, obviously, when you came to the States about 10 years ago. Why women's soccer? I mean, Chelsea women's reserve side, you get started there. English soccer is nowhere near back then what it is today. So what motivated you to start and stay with women's soccer? Yeah, great question. And then, yeah, two immediate answers. Uh, Keith Harms, who worked at Chelsea Football Club, was one of the uh, most willing, uh, one of the only people to put up with my questions, to put up with my mm. constant bothering and, and uh, studying and listening. And he had the patience and tolerance for mm. me. I'm a very important mentor, best friend, and um, he put up with me. So, and he was coaching on the women's side. He opened the door. He allowed me to come and watch and study. Second reason, um, getting a taste of women's football and understanding that uh, the female play. I think it's net today. It's a different world. Uh, go back 16, 14 years. The the female player, uh, and ev- everyone will say this is the same now. I, I I disagree a little bit. The female player would listen more, want to know more, ask why, 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 why. Mm. And I love to be able to get into that in the detail and share and, and be a part of the process, co-collaborate, not just demand or tell, you know, we're going to do this together or you're going to do this. I'm going to be here to support. Um, that was my approach. And, and, that, and that suited when I first got into the women's game. Today, the young or, or senior players, men's or women's, I think that's more common that, that um, everyone wants to know a bit more of the why and, and, and so on. So back then it was, they let me in, they let me talk and I was golden. I love that. Uh, speaking of, of important women in your life, your wife, Hannah, and, and your daughter, Edie, uh, how have they kept you grounded as your career has just ascended? Um, yeah, my wife is, uh, is, is my inspiration, is the reason I am um, who I am and where I am. Um, yeah, the love of my life, best friend. And uh, I'm grateful that I've had someone that uh, has always put up with me. Uh, now she's putting up with two Marks, a, a little seven-year-old female Mark and my daughter, and also myself. She's got two kids in the house that she has to take care of in us too. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful for, for everything that she is and who she is and, and how she uh, looks at life. And when you say what has she done to keep me grounded, um, I think she's uh, she's always uh, the mama bear of the house where I'm very relaxed and chilled. She's always there looking out for me um, while, while sometimes I get frustrated and tell her to chill. Um, she's always trying to protect me, look out for me and look out for my best interests where I I, I am who I am. I, I just look to serve and give to my family first and, and then to everyone I come in contact with. And my job is is all about supporting, serving others. Um, it's the only way I know how to do it. So thankfully, I have one person, my, my wonderful, beautiful wife, who looks after me to, and looks out for me. And then, of course, she's training my daughter, Edie. She's training Edie to look out for me, and she's um, she does the same. She has some some new favourite sayings. Uh, when we beat uh, Gotham, she said to me after the game, um, it's time for Gotham to get back on the pain train to oh, New Jersey. Oh, the pain train! Um, that was one um, <laughs> against O.L. Rain uh, when Fishlock was was um, uh, sharing with everyone that her hamstring was a bit tight. Edie uh, was not fooled and she was telling everyone in the stadium that she wasn't hurt. And when she went off the field and then jumped back on immediately, she decided to tell everyone, I told you, I told you, I knew it wasn't real. And she said, Dad, I knew there was something fishy about Fishlock. Oh, clever. Uh, I, and, and you have to admit, the apprentice is doing well in, in looking out for me. 
Well, and without question, and all due respect, she's tremendously popular, more popular than you with Thorns fans. And 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 that says a lot. Yeah, I mean, since since she was right, yeah, she's crazy. been a huge part of every post-game celebration, especially with the riveters and the players. No one can get enough of her. And you kind of just sit back. You said it, you were chilled. You kind of sit back and let the magic happen. How does a dad feel about his daughter literally growing up with these incredible players and these wacky riveters? How does dad feel about this? Uh, yeah, for, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. But the, the, the best gift that Portland has given me and my family is my daughter, the rest of her life, the way, you know, from two to seven now, two years old to seven, she only knows and only believes that female athletes get mm. the same as men across because of this experience. That's the only way she sees it. And for the rest of her life, she will absolutely tell people and demand from people that that's the only way it can be because of the way she's grown up. And yeah, the, the, the experience on game day um, uh, every day for her, she, she woke me up 6.30. She went back to sleep on game day against Louisville telling me, about asking me about the game, telling me about the game. She can't wait to see everyone begging to be on the field. She can't be on the field right now with, with COVID. We brought her on the Challenge Cup final. Um, um, uh, but and, and I'm sure she'll be back on soon. And you know, she was in tears at, on the Louisville game because she wanted to come on. She had a couple of friends and uh, yeah, it wasn't possible. But we'll be back, I'm sure. Uh, I love, I, I just so grateful for how everyone's um, accepted her and made her feel like the queen of Portland. Oh, yeah. she thinks oh, she, yeah. She is, um, or she knows she is, and uh, she knows she's more popular than me. That's absolutely fine by by me and my wife. Okay, that's just such good stuff. Uh, we're we're going to bring this train to the station with our fourth and final segment. Let's get back to soccer for a moment. Obviously, you're in that international window, the FIFA break. Um, time for many many players on the Thorn side to honor their international commitments, and a chance for others to step up in training. You've seen this movie before. Bring it on. Yeah, it's a, a really exciting period. One of the go back a few years ago is one of our most um, important periods, and I think of players who are crushing it right now. And I, I can't list one because many players who who have either come in um, undrafted or come in and built their way through to the role they're playing, and you can think of names immediately. It's these windows, it's off seasons that they have put in deliberate and purpose where everyone it's really hard to gain an advantage in normal weeks or not you know in season every, when every club has every player every you know the difference will be one two percent we believe we always have that this period people of course a lot of people take time off we have a couple of days yes. and we're getting better and we're growing and we're being deliberate and purposeful match match with the player's identity and um, what they want to improve and what they want to uh, work on this is especially important period and because that, that travel period, we have some players still in Portland. We couldn't train. You know, it felt like an international tournament with the quick games. We couldn't train. So a lot of people need to train and need to push. Now, on the other side, there's some people who who absolutely need the, the opposite. Yep. So that, that helps. That adds a challenge but makes it more important. We're excited for this period. We can't wait to train this week. Then we train next week in preparing for KC. Um, before then, it's all about the individual, all about them getting better. And this... This is why Simone Charlie's showing that she's one of the, the most impactful forwards in this league because she maximised this time. And I wish it was magic exercises or drills or sessions. She put in the work. She's put in the time. And it's been deliberate. Like everyone could spend three hours training or you could spend 60 minutes or two, 75 minutes deliberately focused working on what helps you be the best version of yourself. We have so many players that have done that and we're really proud of it. You mentioned your next game against uh, Kansas City. That'll happen June 20th at Providence Park. Uh, at the very least, uh, fan attendance will be increased to 80% capacity, maybe even better if we get some COVID protocol breaks. What is it going to mean to you and your players to be at near capacity in front of the best fans in the world? Yeah, and just having some fans in the stadium right now is, um, we all knew it would be absolutely surreal, special, unique, and, and, and so important so important to our minds it helps yeah. but more yes. important to our hearts and our souls and getting those numbers up in a safe way uh, absolutely can't wait can I, I 
uh, I remember the commissioner was in town, probably the Challenge Cup final. So I, I, I don't know what we, we were obviously limited capacity and the place was on fire. And I saw her after the game, you know, 15 seconds. I, and I said, Lisa, you know, what's, I don't know, 4,000, 6,000. I don't yeah. know what's here, but imagine what 24,000, 25,000 sounds like. And she's like, it, it sounded like that today. And I went, exactly. Um, you know, please come back, come and see this place when we're full. It, it, it is it is the most special place and uh, in the world for for uh, soccer, men's or women's. I've gone back, I've watched Premier League games, men's Premier League games in England where I thought had a great atmosphere and I feel, I feel upset that I burst my own bubble. I thought they were good atmospheres. They're nowhere near what the Portland Thorns, what Riveters, what the fans, what the players, the connection, the intensity, yeah. the emotion. Yep. It, out, unbelievable and so happy that we're, we're building the right way in numbers. Uh, new young faces, obviously, coming into the fold with the draft picks. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about them at a, at a later time, and I'm excited about that. But the situation with young Olivia, would love to touch on where we are right now. Quite a ride concerning uh, the 15-year-old Olivia Moultrie. Lots we don't know, but what do we know about this talented player who's been training with you for the last couple of years? I love the way you asked it because, because, and then you, you know, get to the detail. The, the stuff that I have only stayed focused on is, is all the stuff about the person, yes, about the human being, um, supporting, developing, and about the player, of course, trying to, to nurture this, this incredible talent. So it starts off with what a person, what a player who, who came in, you know, just over two years ago now. Um, with a vision of just being better, of growing, of improving. Mm -hmm. We had a club, we had a GM, we had a uh, front office that saw this big picture and, and wanted to be a part of it. And, and I, I absolutely understand a lot of people doubted it for many reasons. And what I committed to with our staff was we're going to give this person everything we got to grow and develop. And yeah, we all sit here and say we want this to uh, result in X one day but the, the the thing we can control is we can pour everything in supporting rich gunning our assistant coach mm -hmm. for over two and a half over two years now is one-on-one -on -one there to support mentor manage uh, schedule periodization technical tactical planning all of us as a staff we we obviously treat her like everyone else but then she gets that special one-on-one -on -one attention because of the uh, the the uniqueness of this and making sure that you know, we can have a good plan, but plans always need to be tweaked and evolved. We need to learn in live time what is and what isn't working. She she has continued to grow. She's continued to develop. Um, the nine-week preseason this year, probably the best thing after a more challenging year last year of COVID um, in, in the disrupting the season. That nine-week preseason meant she was playing against OL Range, played against OL Range twice, right. played against Timbers boys. She played against the Thorns, Thorns v Thorns. So she was involved in in every training game playing every minute and and what you know while it can be subjective i think i think it's, it would be very hard to find anyone who who doesn't see this person this player is ready to play now um she proved that against ol range she proved that against the thorns she's compete you know if she was available to play to get on this pitch um i say that with raw excitement i hope that we get i think we're really close we need to get there this is about Olivia continuing her journey, but we also have a bigger responsibility. This is about the, you know, sometimes we say the 1%, you know, the 0.1% of, of youth players that are capable of making this step. Um, everywhere else in the, in the world, countries are making it easier and building better pathways and safer pathways for this to happen. Unfortunately here, and I think I'm the, the flag bearer of, of, of NWSL and, and really proud of and believe it is the best most competitive league uh, in the world. This is one area for, you know, since 2015 that I've been quite passionate about. We make it harder than any other country. We put up, we build, we don't even, it's not about trying to take down bridges. We actually build new, uh, sorry, bridges, uh, uh, hurdles. Bar we barriers, new, yeah. yeah. Yep. Barriers. We build new barriers to stop this from happening. Um, and, and that's a shame. And, and I, I, I think player welfare and the safeguarding of young kids in a professional environment is number one priority. Mm -hmm. Everywhere in the world has worked it out. Other sports, boys, men's sports in this country has worked it out. So I think, yeah, we have a responsibility to keep knocking on the door. Yeah, great for Olivia, great for um, the work that's been going on because it's been a, an incredible development project. 
um, that started, you know, years and years yeah. and years ago with Liv and her family and the last two years in Portland. But two, there's a bigger purpose here. And, you know, U.S. Uh, are destined and, and really want to stay on top. Well, I think we got to get we got to start improving how we help young players get into the pro game earlier. If that's what's best, the 0.1%, if that's what's appropriate for the person and the player, like it is here with Liv. And yeah, you guys, you guys are going to have fun watching this young player when she hits the, the field at Providence Park. Uh, a huge thank you for your, your, your candor about Olivia, where, where you are right now with that situation. And again, ever changing, goalposts change, it's fluid. But, but thanks for, for, you know, giving us a little bit of the heart of the matter there. And, and, Goodness sakes, Mark, thanks for, for being on the show and having you, you called it the guinea pig of our first Thorn show, pretty darn special and, and a huge thank you for your time. And it's, it's great to do, to talk, uh, you know, I, I, you give me the chance to talk, I, I embrace it fully, uh, it's more special to be able to see you, connect with you, so I, 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 I've enjoyed, I love this, but my team needs this, we need ah. to and let's work this out, let's get you and the team together a lot more in the near, in the near future. That, that sounds great. Uh, you know, the neat thing is, is this show is going to continue, Mark. And, and the next time we roll this out, knock on wood, it'll be later this month with a really special player of yours. I'm not going to ruin it or jinx it, so I'm not going to go into any more details. Folks will just have to stay posted. And uh, thanks again for your time, buddy. Go Thorns. Take care, man.